So I'm a psychologist. And that means um, I'm a little long on the L, I study learning, I'm a little short on the D and really short on the M. So I apologize in advance for what I'm about to do, which is really deliver a scientific paper, an Ignite Talk rejected DML proposal. <laughs> Let's talk about the promise of digital badges. You all know what badges are. They were going to transform the world, right? About a few years ago, they were going to create new ways to recognize learning. They were going to unlock opportunities for learning. We had the Arnie Duncan kickoff in 2011, the Digital Media and Learning Competition, an amazing event in 2013. We've got Connie and Mark and David on stage with, with Bill Clinton promising two million badges, Badge Alliance. Where are we now? Well, tch, we're not quite there yet. What's the problem with digital badges? Everybody pretty much agrees they're not really yet widely valued by employers, admissions officials, and therefore not by many learners. We're not quite there yet. We've got some work to do. I want to talk about a study that I did that I think will shed some light on the challenges we face. The Digital Media, uh, the Design Principles Documentation Project, we studied the 29 projects that were funded to develop digital badges in the 2012 competition. I was blessed with an amazing group of collaborators. We spent two years doing a, a, a very complicated sort of design study of the sorts of which I don't know anybody ever did before. Um, it was a little complicated. Uh, part of it was that they funded 29 very, very different projects to do something that had never really been done before, which was build a, a badge system and a broader learning ecosystem around digital badges. So the question is, is what happened? Well, what, what did we do in the first place? We tried to capture the practical wisdom. What's the sort of contextualized, nuanced knowledge that emerged across these 29 projects? Because we felt that that knowledge might travel with this innovation in ways that other people could use. So we decided let's organize this a little bit. We looked at five different, four different functions of badges. Recognizing learning, assessing learning. If you're going to recognize and assess learning, you're going to impact motivation. And then we thought about using the evidence of study learning. We tracked the evolution of badge design practices. We looked at their intended practices and their original proposals. Then we interviewed projects to see how were those intentions enacted? Did it work? Didn't it work? And then we looked at the formal practices after funding was ended. This allowed us to identify more general design principles across these projects. Once we formalized those principles, we could study them across the projects and bookmark them to the broader academic literature. How'd it go? Here's what we found. Badges work better in some places than others. You see on the left that only five of, the, that five of these projects never even built a badge system. You can see on the right that only 11 of these projects ended up creating what resembled the ecosystem they proposed. We also found that badges work better. Data in an Ignite talk. Take a look. On the left, you can see in green, the projects that layered badges into existing systems were much more successful than the projects on the right that tried to build everything. We also found that badges work better in informal places. Five of these projects tried to award badges for formal academic credit. One of them succeeded PASA. They paused it after one year. Badges also work better when internally valued. Another obvious practice for adding value to badges is to gain external endorsement. Ten projects tried, only four succeeded. Eight tried to secure external value, only two succeeded. Badges work better when they offer unique information. 4-H built a badge system that was essentially redundant where their existing credentialing system of trophies and ribbons and their existing social networks, they ran into a technology problem, bam, it was paused. Don't do it. The most robust systems we found, we heard earlier today about the mouse system, uh, the mouse wins program, but also S2R Mills. Both of these projects awarded badges for learning that was really social and networked. Badges lent themselves very well. What do we conclude? I believe we need to really redouble our efforts to award formal credit. The existing credentialing system evolved over a century. There's tacit networks. There's a lot of stuff that has to be changed. We just have to keep working at it. The second thing I think we need to do is to redouble our efforts to exploit the unique features. Let's get the evidence in the badges that makes, that adds value above and beyond the formal credential. Let viewers drill down into badges, have lots of transparent evidence. And then finally, the most important thing I think of all, this is a little controversial, we need to align with these other relevant developments and trends. We've been a little resistant with competency-based education. I've concluded we have to give in. We have to work with them. Stackable credentials, credit for prior learning, 
If you're doing this work in the higher education space, I have a project I can help you. Thank you very much. Thank you.